All right, these are the ramp introduction slides. So in order to, to look at ramps, first we need to look at energy. Now, energy is the capacity to do work. Now, we looked at the law of conservation of energy, which energy can be changed or transformed. So the difference between energy changing and energy transforming, well, when energy changes, the total mechanical energy will increase or decrease. It can happen for one of two reasons, an external force or uh, a, a non-conservative force, which are the same thing, increases the total mechanical energy or energy loss due to another external force, right? It's like a friction, decrease the total amount of mechanical energy. So anything external or what we call non-conservative forces. Now, when energy transforms, it transforms from kinetic to potential or potential to kinetic, but the total mechanical energy does not increase or decrease. And this is caused by conservative forces. And the big one is gravity, right? So conservative forces transform energy. The energy is stored somewhere in a field Conservative forces are path independent. Now that comes into play when we're talking about ramps because uh, gravity is what's giving it, uh, giving that object that energy and gravity is a path independent force. It is a conservative force. Now non-conservative forces, they change energy. Energy can be dissipated as heat, sound, internal energy, path dependent, right? So examples of non-conservative forces are friction, mostly all other forces. So if we look at work, right, we know that work is done on objects and the energy of that object will change or transform. Something's happening to the energy of that object. Now, in order for work to be done, three conditions must be met. Number one, a force must be applied. Number two, the object moves some displacement and some component of that force is in line with that displacement. So some, some part of that uh, force causes that energy to, uh, to, to change or transform, right? So it does look a little complicated, but it's not. That cosine function is just gonna tell us whether work is gonna be positive, zero, or negative. Now, just to simplify this thing, well, positive work is done if the force is applied in the direction of motion. Negative work is done if the force is applied in the opposite direction of motion. And no work is done if the force is applied in the perpendicular to the to motion. So that's what that cosine function tells us. So then we look at, we'll look at power. Now, power is how fast work is being done, right? And we measure, use the unit watts. Now, we ask this question, though, right? So why does Ben Davis... Why does Ben Davis have stairs instead of a ladder? So we looked at this lab. It's all uphill. So in this one, before we even answered the question, before we even started the simulation, we need to... Uh, answer this question. Well, would the angle of the ramp affect the amount of work done to the cart in lifting it to the same height of one meter? Explain why or why not. And I give you a little hint here. So the hint is what type of energy does the cart have at a height? What force is giving it that energy? And is it path dependent or path independent? So we look at this and we know that the, the cart is going to have gravitational potential energy at the top of that one meter hill. Now, the force that's giving it that energy is gravity. It's gravitational potential energy. Now, gravity is path independent. And what this means is that it doesn't matter whether that cart goes straight up one meter or goes up at a gentle like 30 degree incline to the top of that one meter. At the end of the day, it's going to have the same gravitational potential energy. So, it, so the angle doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's still going to have the same amount of gravitational potential energy. So that means the same amount of work is done. Whether that cart is lifted straight up or pushed up at any angle, the work is going to be the same. So we just find the force, which is the weight, multiplied by the displacement, which is like straight up at the one, one, uh, one meter. So that's basically the gravitational potential energy, mass times gravity times height. So I said, like, fill this out, and you'll notice that the work done is the same. At every angle, it doesn't matter whether it's 30 degrees all the way up to 90 degrees, the angle is going to be, or sorry, the work done is going to be the same. Now, when you run the simulation, you need to get the force that's applied to that cart, and then you can calculate the displacement using that, uh, that uh, equation up at the top. Now, if we look at this graph, as the cart is being raised to the same one meter, explain what happens to the displacement of the cart as the angle of the ramp increases. So the displacement, as the angle increases, is getting shorter because like the shortest distance is going to be straight up, one meter, right? And at 30 degrees, you're going to be traveling the longest displacement. Now, what happens to the force being applied to the cart as the angle of the ramp increases? So as the angle increases, you're going to have to apply more force. So going straight up, you're going to apply the most amount of force. At its shallowest at 30 degrees, you apply the least amount. Now, so looking at the graph, as the cart is being raised the same one meter, what happens to the work exerted? 
Well, the work is going to be the same because at the end of the day, it's still just a two kilogram cart going up one meter. So th this question asks, in all of these scenarios, the cart is being pulled up the ramp at an angle. Why isn't that angle put into the cosine function in the equation for the work? Explain your answer. And I give you a hint. What is the angle between the direction of force and the direction of motion? Well, if you look at that, like it, the cart's not being pulled at a 30 degree angle. It's being pulled straight. It's moving straight up that ramp, and it's being pulled straight up that ramp. The cosine, the angle in that cosine function is the angle between the force applied and the direction of motion. And in all of these cases, they're all going to be in line. The, cosine, the, the angle is going to be 0 degrees. So that means cosine of 0 is 1. So it's always going to be positive work. The angle of the ramp does not go into that cosine function. All right. So then it says, explain how a ramp affects the relationship between force applied in, to an object and the displacement of that object. So if you look at that, well, as the ramp gets shallower and shallower, well, you're going to be traveling a longer displacement. You're going to be applying a force for a longer displacement. However, as the ramp gets shallower and shallower, and you're, you're going to be applying less of a force. So that's what ramps do. They allow us to apply less of a force. Now, using your knowledge of work and the data from the lab, answer the following question. Why do buildings have stairs for people to get up to an upper level and not ladders? Well, ladders uh, straight up, right? A 90 degree angle. So that's going to be the shortest displacement, but it's going to be the most amount of force. Now, going up a ramp or stairs allows you to uh, apply a lesser force, right? Even though it's a longer displacement. So we, we ask this question, what do ramps do? So if we look at this, uh, this graphic really shows um, like really uh, good really good example here, right? So you know that the work done is going to be the same amount. So you'll notice at the very top, it's the same cart going to the same height. So it's the same amount of work done. Now, if you'll notice though, the force that's applied is going to be greater for that steeper one and less for that lower one. Now the displacement, it's traveling a longer displacement for that 30 degree uh, angle. Right, so this is just a really good representation. Now, just to sum it up, if you were pulling a cart up a hill, how steep would you want the ramp to be? So if you were pushing or pulling this cart up and it was filled with rocks, it was incredibly heavy, well, it's going to be a lot easier to push it up that gentle incline, that 30-degree angle. And it's not because you're doing less work. You're pushing the same cart up to the same height, same gravitational potential energy, same amount of work done. However, like if you'll notice, Longer displacement. You're applying that force for longer displacement, but the force is going to be a lot lower. Well, as the angle increases and you're traveling a shorter displacement, you have to apply a larger force. So the, the number of the questions is, why do mountain roads twist and turn around the mountain? Why not take a more direct route up? Well, if we look at Colorado Evans Scenic Byway, that's the that's the tallest pave or that's the highest paved uh, road in America. Now, uh, you can see here, well, do all the switchbacks affect the amount of gravitational potential energy that that cyclist did? The no, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You're going to be at the top of that mountain. You have the same amount of gravitational potential energy. It's the same amount of work. Now, what all those switchbacks do, if you look at that equation up there, it increases the, the displacement that that force is applied, so it lowers the force that has to apply. So that's why you can drive up to the top of Mount Evans. It's because you can see all those switchbacks. It increase the displacement lowers the force. Now, if we look at Canton Avenue, which is the steepest uh, road in America, well, you can see here that's a very small displacement. That's just going straight up that hill. Well, because you, the, the, it's a small displacement, you're going to apply a larger force than if there were like switchbacks going back and forth. So once again, there is just too much unknown in the universe to take a break from learning, get out there, and question everything.